Welcome back for today's session as we look at using MATLAB scripting to help you in Simulink with custom M files and model callbacks and mass callbacks and directly in embedded MATLAB blocks. We'll start with a common situation using model callbacks to run M files. One of the more common applications for this is when there is a need to run an initialization script to initialize model parameters before a simulation is run. I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Changing model parameters from one simulation run to the next is as simple then as changing the M file call and the model in it callbacks. In addition, even if model parameters aren't changing from simulation to simulation, it is very convenient and good practice to keep the parameters in the model in one or more M files, and it's helpful to automate running these M files by putting them in the model init callbacks. These M files can not only define parameters and assign values to them, but they can also be used to instantiate buses, define custom data types, assign parameters to custom object types, and specify fields for those custom object types, such as a description field, for example. Let's go ahead and open up a new mscript file. I'll set up three new parameters, a, b, and c, which I'll assign values of 2, 3, and 4 respectively. Now I'll save the m file as init.m. Next I'll create a new Simulink model, open the library browser, and pull in a constant block, a summation block, a product block, and a display block. I'll make two copies of the constant block and I'll populate the value fields in the constant blocks with A, B, and C. Now I'll multiply A and B and add C to the result. Within my model, I'll now go to File, Model Properties, Model Properties again, Callbacks, initfcn, and enter the name of my M file, init. When I run the simulation, the init callback calls my M file and runs it, populating my workspace with the parameters called out in the script so that the simulation will run successfully without error. This case may seem a bit trivial since I only have three parameters, but I've seen cases in industry in which model callbacks are calling M files with thousands of lines. So a nice thing about this approach is that it scales nicely to commercial levels. Typically, you would want to start with a list of definitions in your M file of your parameters and their values. Then, if you want to do something a bit fancier, you can make those modifications as well. Sometimes you'll want to have your M files go with libraries also, so that when you initialize a model, you can use the model callbacks to not only run the initialization script for that model, but to run the M files for the included libraries as well. A second place where it is helpful to set up M files or to do MATLAB scripting is in your mask callbacks. We looked at masks in the last lesson. These callbacks can modify the block as you see fit. For example, a mask parameter can define whether something in the underlying block is specified in the mask or is determined via an external input. You can then set up your mask callback to switch out a constant block with the appropriate parameter name with an input block, depending upon the user selection. A third place to use MATLAB scripting is directly in MATLAB function blocks. You can find these in your library browser in the User Defined Functions section. There can be a temptation, particularly for those with a lot of MATLAB experience but little Simulink experience, to rely heavily on these blocks, even when custom blocks are available that would do the same thing. However, I would recommend using these blocks in relatively few situations. Simulink models are simply much more human-readable when using discrete blocks to perform operations. The logic takes on a visual layout that is much easier to debug and analyze than some MATLAB scripting would often be. In addition, there are some things that Simulink does exceedingly well that MATLAB scripts, in my opinion, tend not to perform as well. Finally, there are cases in which MATLAB scripts can hide performance issues, like internal for loops, that are much more apparent when using native Simulink blocks. If you see the issue in Simulink, you may recognize that your logic can be vectorized or a loop can otherwise be avoided, but if the logic is obscured by MATLAB functions, you may not realize that your logic is taking a performance hit. This may not be as big an issue for you in simulation, other than making your simulation run unnecessarily slow, but these kinds of things can have a cumulative negative impact when you're compiling your code with real-time workshop for use in an embedded system. There are certainly cases, especially in models that are strictly for simulation, where embedded MATLAB blocks can be really helpful, so I won't discount their value, but I do want to warn you that there are disadvantages to becoming heavily dependent on them for your Simulink modeling. Let's go ahead and try using one of these blocks. I'll put it into my model, 
updated it with the code y equals a times b plus c, and then I'll update my inputs to be a, b, and c. Now I'll feed my three constant blocks into the embedded function, place a display block at the output, and run the simulation. The result is the same as I had obtained using discrete blocks. To summarize, there are a number of instances in which MATLAB scripting can be helpful, so treat MATLAB scripts and embedded code as helpful tools as you are building your simulink models. They can perform functions for you that are otherwise unachievable and can help with making your model more maintainable.